morning, bom dia. Welcome to the Brazil, Texas Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to all of you in Brazil and in the US for participating in today's event focused on the downstream petro petrochemical sector. Uh, we have a great group of industry experts with us today and we're excited to discuss this important sector. My name is John Mosley and I'm Chief Commercial Officer at Port Houston. I'm also a member of the board at Bratec and currently serve as chair of the membership committee. The Brazil Texas Chamber of Commerce is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. Since 2001, Bratec has brought Brazilian and Texan professionals together to share, collaborate, and learn from one another. For 20 years, Bratec has worked together with the Brazilian government particularly our local Brazilian consulate, the embassy of Brazil in Washington, DC, and officials in Houston and the state of Texas to support the important and strategic relationship between the state of Texas and Brazil. Last week, Bratex president and executive director were in Brazil meeting with Bratex members and with Brazilian officials to carry out our mission. Houston is well known as the energy capital of the world. The Houston Ship Channel, where we are located today, is ranked as the busiest seaport complex in North America. For us in Houston, that translates to more than 285 million tons of maritime commerce through the Houston Ship Channel annually, and over 20,000 vessel transits per year, more than any other seaport in the country. Most of our deep water vessels are oil tankers, chemical and gas carriers, moving either crude or refined products through the largest refinery complex in the country. According to the US Energy Information Agency or the EIA, the Houston Ship Channel accounts for more than 27% of America's refining capacity or about 1.6 million barrels per day. And that doesn't include the more than 500 million barrels of energy storage capacity in Houston, and the fact that the Houston region along the Gulf Coast is home to the largest petrochemical cluster in the Western Hemisphere, with a wide range of energy-related downstream petrochemical manufacturing and processing plants that include integrated ethylene processing and plastics and resins production plants surrounding the Houston Ship Channel. The Houston Ship Channel's total trade with the world was more than $15 billion just in the month of July, an increase of 54% from the same month one year ago, with exports growing at 53%. According to the Texas Comptroller's Office, Houston supports more than 63% of Texas's global trade via seaports. The state of Texas is the largest exporting state of the 50 United States. And its economy, if it was to be ranked on a global scale, would be ranked ninth largest economy in the world. Brazil is our largest trading partner immediately following Mexico. And Brazil is the Port of Houston's largest trading partner in the entire Southern hemisphere. The cargo being shipped can vary greatly. In the case of Brazil, for example, while energy related products are big sources of trade, of, more than, of the more than $15 billion of trade with Brazil, it's, it's significantly influenced by industrial equipment and computers that are exported to Brazil, accounting for nearly 11% of our exports to Brazil in 2019. But again, refined products like fuel and gas continue to account for the lion's share of trade with Brazil and other top trading partners out of Texas. With that, I'd like to pass the stage to Moacir Pedro from Port Houston to moderate today's discussion and to introduce today's speakers. We've got a great set of speakers ready for you today. Thanks again for your interest in today's event. Bratec offers webinars and in-person networking events on a regular basis, featuring subject matter experts in the areas of upstream exploration and production, 
the midstream and downstream energy sectors, space exploration, academics and education, sustainability, and other sectors and industries. For more information about Broadtech, our events, or if you're interested in becoming a member, please visit our website at braziltexas.org. Have a great panel. Thank you. Mosir, the stage is yours. Bom dia, good morning, John. Thank you very much for your words, for welcoming words. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, good morning, bom dia to everyone. Uh, thank you very much for you, the, all the attendees. Thank you very much for all of you, the panelists invited for, for this webinar today. Okay. Uh, let me start introducing you to the guys. First of, one, first of all, we have Luciano Guachi, who's the ISC director for Dow Chemical. Luciano is the Latin American Integrated Supply Chain Director for the Packaging and Specialist Plastics and the Hydrocarbons Business. Uh, Luciano defines and develops the competitive advantage delivered by the supply chain, including raw material, packing and logistics procurement, and build into the business strategy, leads the supply chain and customer service teams by effectively communicating the business strategy and demonstrating how the strategy is enabled by EIC plans. Luciano is in the house since 2008, quite a long period, as a specialist in Argentina for PASP, and after all, moved through the variety of supply chain roles, and it, since 2013, participated in CEO International Exchange Program in Accra, Ghana. Before joining Dow, Luciano worked 10 years in the logistics service provider industry in Argentina and in Brazil in different companies, with focus in port operations, in terminal projects, in-house logistics and warehousing services. I would like to thank you very much, Luciano, for accepting this invitation and participate on our webinar. Uh, now let me introduce you all guys to Manuel Diaz. Manuel, now, now is the correct day. Manuel is so, was so excited to participate on this webinar that he tried to connect with us yesterday. <laughs> well, Manuel, Manuel Diaz is the Latin American Petrochemical uh, Director for APLA. Okay, he's an engineer, uh, expert in senior executive, specialized in strategic business management relation to the health, food, chemical, and petrochemical business. Uh, over the course of his career, he acquired in depth knowledge of Latin American markets, developed strong managerial skills, former president and general manager of Praxair Argentina, Chile, and Paraguay. And he's also a former director in, in a master business administration at Universidad del Salvador do Esto in Spain. And last and not, not less important, Alexandre Silva, senior logistics direct, uh, manager for SABEC. He's a supply chain executive with broad experience in sales and operation planning, logistics, procurement, operations management, customer service and continuous improvement in North and South America. Acquired over 24 years of service. He's from Brazil, living in US. And is here for, and he's, oh, he was also my, my neighbor down here in Brazil and living in Sao Paulo. <laughs> we discovered it a couple of weeks ago. That's fantastic, that's fantastic. Well, uh, I would like you all you guys to introduce yourselves and you, Dominic, special to you, Dominic. I want to start. Uh, I don't want I don't want to introduce my boss. So please. <laughs> Hello, bon dia. Good morning to everyone. I wanted to all welcome you all to Bratech and Port Houston sponsored downstream the future of petrochemical industry in Brazil and its relation to supply chain infrastructure. And I especially want to thank Bratech for their partnership with Port Houston. As Moisir mentioned, my name is Dominic Sun and I'm the trade director for Port Houston. The subject of downstream activities and ex, you know, resin exports to Brazil is a very important one uh, for Port Houston and the industry in the region. Brazil, as John mentioned, is our number one Latin America trading partner. In 2020, Port Houston exported nearly 367,000 metric tons of polyethylene to Brazil, which represents about 30% of 
of all total PE exports to Latin America. And in 2021, year to date, June, Port Houston has already exported nearly 307,000 metric tons of polyethylene to Brazil, which now represents about 40% of total polyethylene exports to Latin America. Therefore, we are extremely excited to take part in this Bradtech downstream webinar, along with this very distinguished panel. We're here to contribute to the discussion on how Port Houston will support the growth of this industry in infrastructure, but we're also here to listen to our industry experts and understand how Port Houston can continue to improve in our industry and service delivery to our export resin customers. So thanks again, Moisir, and thank you all for attending. And I'd like to turn it back to Moisir to get the pro program kicked off. Thank you, thank you very much, Dominic. Uh, let me just give a, a second to each one of each of you, uh, Manuel, Luciano, and Alex, uh, just to have a quick introduction of yourself. Of course, I have already done, but just to give you a voice before I start the program, okay? Uh, let's start in alphabet order, uh, Alex. Good morning, bon dia, everybody. Um, I'm Alex Silva, as introduced before. Uh, based out of Houston, I worked for SEBIC uh, for two years, uh, two and a half years now, but um, yeah, over 24 years of service in general, like um, was here said. Very happy to be in the panel. Uh, our partnership with Port Houston is growing every day, so it's, uh, it's really good to be part of the, 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 the panelists uh, here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much for your participation in your time. Uh, second one is alphabetical order, Luciano. Thank you, Moisir, and thank you very much to Brazil, Texas Chamber of Commerce uh, for generating this space, especially uh, to Port of Houston that, that has been for four years uh, a big partner of, of Dow. I had the, the pleasure to work with Houston Port for several years. Uh, so I, I would just only say that I'm happy to be here. Uh, thanks for uh, creating this space uh, to debate about this topic that, that to me is uh, quite uh, important for, uh, for the industry in Brazil. So uh, thank, you, thank you very much and happy to start the conversation. Thank you, Luciano. Thank you. You know how, how important you are for us and how important you are for, for in this participation. Uh, Manuel? Good morning. I'm here from yesterday waiting. Uh, really, I, I, I would like to thank uh, Brazil, Texas Chamber and Port of Houston for the opportunity to be here in this panel. For us, uh, um, Port of Houston is a very, very important member in our association and it's a good opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for your support, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, well, let's start with that. Uh, well, for the, all the attendees, uh, I would like you to concentrate on all the questions in the Q and A uh, section, please. Uh, if you're not, if you're not uh, so usually with uh, English language, you can you can type in Portuguese. There's no big deal. I'll, I'll translate to to the to the panelists in question. Okay, don't worry. Uh, I'll, I'll start with um, some some topics here, but uh, the session of question and, and answers it's open to everybody. Okay, so don't worry about that. Uh, well, guys, uh, I'm gonna start with some some topics here to discuss. Okay, uh, as we know, as we saw here, uh, we have an. Uh, two Argentinians, two Brazilians, one American. Uh, most of them living abroad or uh, having having such experience abroad. Uh, and I would like to 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 understand from you guys uh, a view from a third person, a view from a foreigner, a perspective from a foreigner in the Brazilian market or in other in other countries, just like uh, uh, Alex. Uh, I will start with Luciano, uh, who's Argentina, and he started his career in Argentina and worked in Brazil for uh, such a long time. And I would like to know from Luciano, and then I'll pass to the others, uh, from a perspective of a foreigner, uh, what were the biggest challenges and the opportunities uh, you saw and you could uh, recognize in Brazil 
in downstream. Thank you very much. And maybe I, I would start with a disclaimer. I'm not talking about soccer. We can discuss anything but soccer with, with Argentina and Brazil. But, but, uh, but I have to say that, that, that I love living and working in Brazil. Uh, Brazil is a huge country uh, full of natural resources with a big internal market, one of the biggest, the biggest in, in Latin America, and very connected to the world. So, so in terms of opportunities, uh, I, I do see Brazil uh, as, um, as full uh, of opportunities for the future. Uh, when we talk uh, about uh, challenges and, and focusing on the uh, infrastructure, on supply chain uh, for our chemical, petrochemical industry, we do have uh, se several challenges that at the end of the day are opportunities for, for us that work as professionals in, in this uh, supply chain sector. So it's all about opportunities. Uh, wh while I was uh, preparing for this meeting, I, I took a look at, at the numbers and it, it, it's pretty interesting that uh, the, uh, the chemical industry in Brazil produced around 60 million tons if, if we exclude uh, fertilizers and imports and exports are about uh, 12, 13 million each. So it's pretty balanced with a huge local component. Uh, so it's a good market uh, to work in, but when we take a look at the infrastructure that we have uh, to serve our customers, to import, to export, we do have <laughs> opportunities or areas to work on. And, and I think I, I could mention some of them. Uh, maybe the first uh, I would mention it's uh, to improve uh, efficiency and capacity are, uh, at ports. If we talk about Santos port, it's a good example. Uh, of uh, uh, how we need uh, to improve our efficiency, mainly in, in bulk liquid products, uh, but then also uh, in the way we handle peers, uh, trucks, uh, storage in tank farms, uh, truck movement, even pipelines to connect the port with, with, the, with the rest of the area. So we do have opportunities there, uh, and if you, if we talk about other ports like Aratu, Paranagua, Rio Grande, it's a similar discussion about opportunities. Then another area that I think it's uh, very important to, uh, to foster is the, the use of um, short sea movement along, along the coast that we have in, in, in Brazil, uh, cabotation is not widely used and it's a big opportunity uh, for a country like this one with so many kilometers of coast. Uh, then uh, another area of uh, focus from my point of view at least uh, is to develop rail transportation. Uh, Brazil is a huge country as I said before uh, and we should be able to move more in rail mode uh, at least uh, from my experience, it's quite complicated uh, to get into the rail modal and be, efficiency, uh, be efficient uh, to compete with other models. Uh, and to, to be honest, uh, does not make any sense uh, to move uh, 20 tons of uh, dangerous, good liquid in a truck uh, inside the country where we should be using rail mode for, for that. Then uh, another, another area that, that I consider important uh, to, to develop is uh, multimodalism. Uh, it's, it's not uh, widely developed. It's pretty complicated to get uh, from one mode of, tra of transportation to, to the other. Uh, so generating the conditions uh, to uh, use more multimodalism within Brazil uh, should also be a priority for all of us. Maybe my, my, my last comment would be around road mode or tracks that it's by, by far uh, the, 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 uh, the, the biggest mode to uh, move our products uh, in, in Brazil. Uh, 
uh, we do have opportunities uh, to improve the conditions of the roads, uh, to generate more highways, uh, to improve services to trucks and drivers along the way. Um, so uh, I, I don't want to take the, the whole space here, but, but, uh, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy to have don't worry, uh, don't worry, so this, this many opportunities. Uh, we, can, we, can, we can stop each other. If Manuel or Alex has a comment or Dominic has a comment, you, it, can, it can be done. Uh, it's a, a conversation among us. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay, I would like to, to add something uh, additional, yeah, to the, the, the comment of uh, Luciano. Uh, in my point of view, the, the, the main challenge on Luciano's side is uh, infrastructure, yeah? Uh, we need to improve our infrastructure in all of Latin America, mainly in the biggest port, of course, Brazil is the biggest. Um, the, why is it so important? For example, in Argentina, with only one uh, investment that we call the uh, Paseo del Bajo, uh, we reduce uh, more than 50% of the time yeah, of the track from the port to outside uh, Buenos Aires. So that reason is very, very important. Maybe you have another, another country, such as Colombia, for example, that is investing in, 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 in digitalization. Yeah. In, in the port operation. And uh, in my opinion, now the challenge is uh, the investment because the different government now, the, the priority for the government is, of course, invest in to recover the economy. Yeah. In the last uh, two years, um, our, our economy in Latin America and Brazil, of course, uh, decreased a lot. Yeah, more in Latin America in general, more than 7% GDP. And we need the priorities to recover this, uh, this economy. For that reason, um, it's difficult to think that we have opportunity to invest in, in infrastructure. For that reason, you have another uh, challenge. Yeah? And the main challenge for me is uh, to be prepared for the next crisis. Yeah. We have next crisis, of course. We have uh, hurricanes, volcanoes, rain, a lot of things, and now the pandemic. Uh, I think that uh, we need to be prepared. Yeah, that is it's, it's a good, good challenge that we can transform in opportunity. Learning about this crisis. Uh, one point important to learn is the opportunity to increase digitalization in our in our uh, supply chain, in our port, in our system. Um, in the report of the um, Inter-American Development Bank, the gap between the, the developed country, the port in developed country, and Latin America, the gap is more than 10 years in technology, in digitalization. If we think the, how fast the, the technology is, uh, is updating, maybe this gap uh, will be higher in the future. We need to implement this digitalization now. And that is, is a good opportunity because all the, the countries are uh, allowed to work with better or less, yeah, in the process now. I think that this is a very, very good opportunity to increase digitalization. We are transforming the, the, the challenge in a good opportunity, moving from the using the, the website at data to EDI in order to, to move the electronic information through the all the, the actor in the supply chain, yeah? Increasing the transparency, the information, everything, and of course, reducing cost, yeah? We might think that the, 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 the Inter-American Bank say that the, the cost to move product from Latin America, from Brazil, for example, to the state is higher than move product from Asia to, to the state, for that reason, 
uh, we have a serious competitive problem. Yeah? We need, in my opinion, the challenge is to reduce cost dramatically in the supply chains. Uh, one more thing that uh, Luciana said that is very, very important in our, in our region is the intermodal terminals. We need to work in intermodal terminals. Uh, we have a lot of opportunity to reduce our cost, to um, reduce the delivery time, uh, working or investing in intermodal terminals. Okay, nothing more. I want to, to. No, don't worry. No, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Uh, uh, actually, this is the this is the point of this webinar and of this question specifically. I uh, heard from a foreigner, from a third person, uh, that most of we the, the perspective that we have here too uh, as Brazilians. Uh, as I'm going to to pass the, the the word to to Alex now. Let's see what Alex has to say. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Luciano Emanuel, for warming up the session. Um, yeah, I think this is Jason is uh, important, of course. It comes on top of processes or uh, systems that are not ready for that, that uh, that's, uh, doesn't solve sometimes the issue. I think one of the challenges in Brazil is always the tax system. It's very complex. Uh, it changes a lot, right? So connecting companies, ERPs to the tax system is always an issue because you need to update constantly, right? It's very complex. The other part of that is that the physical movements are still concurrent to the, to the tax transactions. So the physical movement, the commercial transaction and the tax transaction are all together in Brazil. And this is an issue, right? I mean, because we need to coordinate all of that. And again, one of those um, transactions get stuck, um, we affect the whole the whole process, right? Um, yeah, so the tax collection and tied to the commercial transactions is it's something that is very unique for Brazil. I see many other companies um, that you can do um, in separate environments, right? You can invoice um, totally separate from other from the transactional and physical movements, which is uh, which is really good. Uh, I think the uh, the lead times in general, right? Um, and going a little aside from digitization, I think um, Brazil has been evolving. I recall uh, ten years ago um, we had um, a goal for seven days for clearance in Santos, for instance, or in Brazil in general, uh, imports, clearance, import, customs uh, clearance, and uh, we've been becoming better along the way. We are 50% of that today. It's basically three to four days maximum, right? Uh, the opportunity, of course, if you are an authorized um, economic agent uh, or um, um, operator, you can be even faster than that. So that's a, that's a gain that we've been seeing there. Uh, so as much as we can um, get our companies signing up to that, it's, uh, it's really an advantage uh, on this. Uh, Cisco Max is a great system. I think it's been proving it's been digitizing more and more, but it's again, it's um, overlaying a complex system for taxes, which is sometimes that's the issue for, for imports in general. Um, yeah, the long processing times in general and the, the complexity in the, in the system, the lack of uh, infrastructure, the, the lead times for transportation, they add cost at the end. And that, that makes the, the I mean, that's I think to be uh, the major challenge for for um, every every um, industry operating in Brazil. Um, the other challenge I see is that because of the economical and political turmoil, it's always hard to invest for the long term to have long term agreements. It's always tough, right? So volume commitments and balance with flexibility somehow you need to I mean, manage this situation in Brazil, which is really, really uh, cumbersome sometimes. So we, we have bats and uh, we need a big, uh, I mean, to build uh, really solid business plans. So working with the businesses is very, very important, right? And the industry in general, your uh, distributors and partners. So you have some type of uh, protection, right? Uh, in that case. Um, so... On top of that, we've been, and I, my, my other colleagues have mentioned that, we've been having lots of effects derived from the pandem pandemic environment, right? Supply chain constraints, global shortage of containers, uh, delayed lead times for vessels, uh, multiple things, or lack of space on vessels. 
and this is adding to this to this process right now so think building resilience that's the opportunity right in the supply chain by developing alternatives developing other ways of serving right developing multimodality right it's uh, it's been uh, the the response time for you to implement a new lane right from zero from the opportunity or reaction to a certain constraint up to implementation this has been tested uh, uh, for all companies right that we need to cross this uh, efficiently so contractual templates, everything you can do to cross this quickly, that helps the, the process, I think. Um, yeah, so on the op opportunities, I think infrastructure has been improving a lot in Brazil. I've been reading as well, preparing for this conversation, and I, I've been seeing numbers. I, I take the, the um, Santos Port as an example. I think the, the zoning and development plan is a great plan. Uh, it's uh, one year now that we renewed the, the PDZ, the Plano de Desenvolvimento and Zoneamento, right? Uh, it's been, um, I mean, improving already. We see lots of concessions and privatization in the sector. Uh, the port is not, I mean, no longer so congested for uh, as it used to be in the past, right? And uh, it's uh, the projected increase until 2040 is 50% of tonnage. Right, being 64% of these increase for containers only, which is uh, affects the resins market uh, a lot uh, and other markets, of course. Uh, I think the clusterization, like the sectoring of the of the port, which is still not there, right? So we have mixed um, 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 products or end, end the users uh, using the port in different areas. Now the, the plan is clusterized or some of the sectors will be dedicated to certain activities like book solids, book liquids, containers, very well organized. So that helps to connect um, roads and, and uh, railroads right to the port in, uh, in an intermodality as well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think um, um, the other is the, the road sector is, is still growing, still pri being privatized uh, little by little, uh, not in big waves like in the past, right? That's another big wave of, uh, of investment coming to Brazil. We, I've been reading $8 billion uh, in the next two years. Um, last but not least, I think the uh, sustainability, we have a lot of opportunities too, right? For um, GNV or e-trucks. Um, I think as the technology is evolves for e-trucks, we have more and more of that. Uh, nowadays, we see trucks coming up to 14 metric uh, tons only. Uh, for heavy cargo that you have in the resins in the industry, we need more than that. So, um, but I think it's coming. It's a matter of time. We will have more, and of course, the infrastructure, the network for recharging those trucks is uh, will be improving along with that. With, with that. So, uh, in uh, yeah, and my last comment on the I think the fragmentation of the three PLs and four PLs on this uh, is um, because of um, yeah, maybe the risk aversion or history. Uh, we don't have um, too many large players. Uh, Right. We do have a presence, but I think we have more consolidation, more M&A activity, um, consolidating the, the market in Brazil. And that's the opportunity for, for big companies to integrate logistics with 4PLs and 3PLs operating in different areas, geographical areas. So we, we really uh, um, have the system coming integrated through those opportunities. So that's another um, big um, opportunity. I think it's coming um, gradually. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, and now from, uh, I would like to pass the word to, to Dominic. Uh, Dominic, as you saw, uh, I have a lot of issues and challenges and opportunities uh, down here in Brazil and would like to, to see uh, uh, from a perspective from an American in the U.S., how the <laughs> things are going in the in, in, in U.S., as you, as you said. Uh, as you saw, uh, Luciano told, uh, told us about infrastructure, Manuel Diaz about digitalization, Alex some sustainability about, and, and also uh, uh, multi, multi proposal, multi proposal uh, terminals and so on. Uh, we in Brazil, we in Brazil, we, we used to know uh, as the locomotive of Latin America. Everybody look at us. Uh, and you guys in the US, you're the locomotive. For the whole world, of course, to us too. So everybody <laughs> look are, at you. Yeah, absolutely. Especially for you know for petrochemical, petrochemical and, um, and resin exports, right? You know, 
I love to say, you know, ditto to whatever Alex said and Manuel said and Luciano said, but because they are the subject matter expert. But I can certainly touch upon a couple of things, right? Infrastructure is so paramount, whether you're talking about in Brazil on the receiving side or on the, you know, on the origin side in, in Houston, right? So as far as poor as Houston, we look at sustainability in a couple ways, right? Sustainability in, in our service and being able to you know, provide capacity to our export customers. We look at it from the other segment is, is you know, how do we provide sustainability as far as environmental initiatives are concerned? So, you know, I can I can certainly talk to both. Uh, first on the service side, right? We understand that this this resin market and, and we being in the you know oil and gas. Um, center of, of the US, you know, we have a line of sight on what is going on in this particular industry and the growth that it's going to experience in the next, you know, two to five years. And we have, you know, we have done everything that we have can as a terminal complex to prepare ourselves for that, for that growth, right? So we're spending about $210 million dollars every year in CapEx expansions between our two Barbers Cut and Bayport facilities. That's additional cranes, uh, additional CY and, 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 and container yards, um, along with, with, with you know, new RTGs, new cranes. And that is all also tied to our sustainability on the environmental initiatives as well. So, you know, our, our recent, most recent purchases of RTGs are all hybrid. You know, service vehicle throughout the port have all been converted to elect, uh, uh, electric vehicles. So we're looking at every opportunity going forward to provide not only sustainable service, but also sustainable as far as environmental initiatives are concerned. So we're putting a lot of effort uh, into that. But talking about the other side of it as well is, is, is infrastructure, right? Um, you know, there's an old adage, right? You're only strong as your weakest link, right? So, you know, we feel that we have built a pretty strong link inside our fence line, meaning inside our, our terminal operations. But we also have to do our part um, with advocacy, uh, discussions and understanding all the other supply chain service partners um, because they are huge part of the supply chain and infrastructure as a whole. So what we've seen in recent months is, you know, there's a lack of capacity in 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 the trucking uh, industry. Um, so what do we do in that in in that respect? So we 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 talk to our trucking partners, et cetera, on how we can, as a port authority and also as a terminal operator, how do we help that part of the industry to recruit drivers? Are we doing our part to make it a sustainable um, job for truck drivers? Are they getting enough turns to be a viable business unit if they're visiting our ports on a daily basis? Are they able to have short turn times. And that, that's what we're building into our system to support all facets of supply chain, not just, not just inside our fence line and what's good for us, but overall what's good for our industry as a whole in supporting infrastructure development. So we, we're, we have definitely a, a huge line of sight on, on all aspects that affects our performance along with the industry's performance as well. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much for your, your review, Dominic. Uh, and there are some, some also I saw some, some opportunities that are being, that are being uh, done in, 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 in terms of some challenges that we have here. Uh, for example, the multimodal, the multimodal uh, section, we have, for example, Maersk and CMA investing a lot on this kind of stuff. You can, you can do a door-to-door -door with Merce nowadays uh, as a freight forwarder, for example. They are investing also in the connections on the rail in spite of we don't have enough railroads to 
to link it. I uh, have CMA, for example, investing a lot uh, in, 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 with SIVA uh, in their freight forwarder uh, in, a, in, 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 in mix, uh, not only a, 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 a transporter, a trucker, but also a trucker with a shipping line, with a service provider doing the whole three, four, and five, three, four, and five PL. Uh, and at least, at least uh, as uh, if I'm not mistaken, Luciano told us about uh, cabotage. And we have, for example, MSC. MSC have just bought Login. Uh, so they're going to be a, a, another big player with a cabotage carrier, just like uh, we had Hamburg Sud with Alianza. Uh, in the past, Mer and Mercosur and MERSC. Nowadays, it's CMA and Mercosur. Uh, so we have another big player on, on cabotage too. So maybe we, we are filling these, these, these windows. So it's going to be, it's going to be good. It's going to be better, not good, but a better situation. Okay. Uh, let's do to another, to another topic guys. Uh, as we saw the, uh, on the news, uh, we're going to have a, a, a huge demand for resins, uh, for 2022. Actually it's a forecast. Uh, it was, it was forecasted for this year, now for 2022. And I would like to know uh, about you guys, especially from, from the industry, Sabic and, 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 and Dow, uh, if the supply will, 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 will supply the, the, the demand, uh, if you are able to, to supply this, this such uh, largest demand. Let's start with Luciano again. It's okay? Okay, it's okay and it's a, a good topic. Good to, uh, good to see that, that the market has recovered and we, we do have a, um, a really great forecast uh, for, for next year. Maybe uh, in, in, in the past, when, when we talked about supply, we talked about uh, capacity in our plants, uh, expansion, and uh, so many topics related with production capacity. And now, uh, for good or bad, uh, for us in supply chain, the, the, the topic is a little bit more focused on logistics because uh, what, what the pandemic has, uh, uh, has told us is that uh, we need to be prepared, uh, we need to develop resilience uh, in terms of uh, logistics and supply chains to be able uh, to ship product to our customers. So I, I would say that uh, specifically uh, talking about uh, the next year, maybe even a little bit more, uh, supply reliability uh, is going to be uh, very, very uh, based on our capacity uh, to move products around the world. So uh, I, I, I guess that's our, our main focus. Uh, besides the pandemic, um, because we talked, uh, we talk a lot, a lot about the pandemic. But but in the middle, we we had, uh, we had the Suez Canal block that that generated a big logistics mess around the world. I would say we we for us uh, uh, working in in the Gulf Coast, we do have hurricanes, we do have fog, we do have flooding. Uh, so unexpected events, most of them uh, coming from uh, uh, natural events, but, but uh, another, another ones coming from other areas are uh, generating a lot of work for us specialists in, <laughs> in supply chain. And in, on top of that, uh, we, we could mention uh, social or political issues in, in several countries, mainly in Latin America, and Brazil is not the exception. Uh, we, do, uh, we do have strikes, uh, we do have restrictions or changing conditions to import or export uh, new legislations. So uh, to me, it's all about uh, how we manage all those uh, change in priorities, how we adapt uh, to new conditions, how to improve the visibility and the interaction with our partners uh, as Houston Port to be prepared for the unexpected. <laughs> it's, it's not only about share, uh, sharing forecasts, uh, working together in a project, but being prepared as a team for the unexpected. So 
I, I think that that would be my main comment around uh, growing in the in the next couple of years. I can I can compliment um, on Luciano's words. Um, yeah, Brazil for Sabic is definitely a region uh, targeted uh, for growth, not only for resins but for chemicals and agronutrients. Um, there is intense competition to enter. Local players um, are very, very uh, well positioned. So we need uh, to face the challenges we already mentioned and uh, and, and make the way to to right, to to be competitive. I think as we talk about logistics, um, besides all the challenges we've been having, right, and the word has been flat for us, right, because we have Swiss Canal impacting here, uh, the Yanchan uh, port closure impacting prices container availability and multiple things so it's it's really affecting but uh, besides that i think it's uh the integration um of logistics in between production points and end markets is, is was never so crucial i uh, i totally agree production is no longer uh because production is more internal discussion internal uh, management that we can um somehow control better Right, but it gets to lifting capacity or logistics capacity. That's where the the issues uh, and the, the challenges are. Right, so guarantee we can we can uh, continuously right as, as we talk to our customers. One of the top reasons they keep coming back to Sabic is security of supply and consistent supply. Right, reliability. So this is this is playing a, a vital role. Right, if you position for drop shipments or cost and freight deliveries to countries in general, you need to have that uh, I mean, very well connected oiled machine for you to deliver to those countries. If you cross into the countries, I mean, usually you have inventory, which kinds of buffer the, 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 the issues behind, but every company is fighting for cash. And if you're penetrating and growing, you need even more cash, right? So we don't want to have huge inventories either. So I, I mean, what I'm, I think the point is that Logistics is now the topic. As we talk to commercial teams, uh, in commodities was always the case, but even in specialties now, you talk to business teams and they are reading more about logistics. They are more interested in costs. They're more interested in, in reliability than ever. So I think it's a, it's a great um, great discussion. Um, and and um, yeah, it's the moment. And I don't think this will change. I think um, more Swiss Canal events type of right will come. So a lot of work. I agree. Uh, it's it's a lot of uh, work. Um, yeah. The, um, the other part is how to uh, really I mean the opportunity to trade with the right agents. I think the chain as it is for us, it's a mix of I mean or, or ways to get to the markets. So the discussion about having distributors, having traders, I think they are part of the chain. They complement the chain for, for SABIC. It's not different for many producers of resins and chemicals. Uh, so they take the risk of credit. They add value sometimes by further fragmenting and, and uh, changing the products uh, and materials, right, in a way. So, but they are um, vital for us to reach the markets we want to reach and agglomerating the fragmented volumes and uh, making making uh, the producers' life, the global producers' lives uh, easier in that front, right, of, of the, the small uh, I mean, volume businesses uh, in the regions. Um, yeah, the last, I think it's um, because of the global I mean, flat environment and the dependence more and more on Middle East production, right? So um, the big chemical companies are more and more either um, Middle East or North America, right? I mean, the new crackers and the new the, the growth expansions are in those regions. Uh, this situation is, uh, and we are not the industry, maybe for bulk liquids, which is in bulk solids, right? When we uh, have much more private investment and more control of those chains because that is, uh, uh, scale for that, right? I think when it comes to be containers, we are not the top industry leading that. So I think that's another factor that you need to play with, right? Because fashion, um, electronics, we have other industries leading the containers industry. So we need to, to fight to find our space, right? And, and uh, quickly uh, uh, adapt, right? Um, for us to, to, to continue to be reliable, let's say. Great point of view. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, Manuel, 
uh, what you think that we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna attend the demand or supplier okay. attend the demand uh, what you heard from from the associated associated of Apple okay okay I, I think that the the, 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 the position is very clear uh, in our point of view, <clears throat> the future is very good for the industry, for our industry. Now you have some industries that are demanding products, uh, demanding more than the, uh, the previous pandemic. For example, uh, food and beverage, yeah? for example, personal care, for example, healthcare. This industry are demanding a lot of our products. But now, uh, with the recovery of the economy in different countries, mainly in Brazil, which is a huge kind of market, uh, other industries are demanding our products, the industry, the residents, and different products from our industry. For example, the automotive industry. Yeah, the automotive industry needs a lot of our products. And another is the um, the durable goods, yeah, the durable goods uh, industry is demanding a lot of products. And we must consider that uh, Brazil demand for the, the, the market inside Brazil, but export a lot inter, inter uh, South America. For the reason the demand is very, very high for the future. As I, uh, Alex and, and Luciano, and now the challenge will be to know how we can find this uh, uh, feedstocks to this product yeah, in order to provide to our customer that they transform this uh, product in, for example, packaging, material for automotive industry, etc. Uh, for that reason that, uh, we think that we need to, to work in order to, to, to be resilient, yeah, to learn about what happened in, in the past, and, and to organize a very, very good supply chain yeah, in order to provide this demand that uh, in the next year we think that we're all about. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manuel. Uh, we are we are running off the time. Uh, let me just ask Dominic your, your review, and you can you can also uh, reply the question from let me see from Felipe Valverde. Felipe Laverde. Uh, you you can give your overview. Then yeah I'll, I'll yeah yeah. yeah. I think you. the question comes in from uh, from Felipe. Does the yeah. Port Houston have a strategy to just decrease the merge risk? Right. Speaking strictly on the merge, right? We do not have a strategy to decrease the merge risk, right? Because you know our our published um, free time is published uh, for co public consumption, and the free time, the merge free time that we provide is actually not to the BCO exporters and or the the the, the BCO importers. Um, is provided directly to the carriers. And of course, um, the carriers will, will have their own published free time as well for the, the specific train lanes that they're, um, they're servicing. With that said, um, we do have a strategy of decreasing um, dwell time with, within our terminal facilities. That's what we're seeing affect uh, demerge cost and demerge risk. So we're not focusing on demerge per se, but we're actually focusing in on a strategy to, 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 to answer the call as far as what's causing uh, the extended uh, demerge. So we're seeing you know, normal dwell time on our, our imports um, escalate from the average of four days, now it's 10 days. So something in the supply chain is, is stopping our customers from picking up the containers from the terminal, um, from the terminal which, 
definitely, you know, we don't want to, to have containers dwell at our facility because it affects the terminal operations fluidity because when we have a lot of full CY yards, when, when there's a vessel that's coming um, in, we have no place to discharge the inbound containers. Therefore, we also don't have much room to, 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 to stack export containers as well. So as that dynamic co continues to be in place, you know, fluidity is going to be greatly impacted at our, at our terminal. So, you know, we're looking at everything that we can working with industry, working with our BCO customers, both on the import side and on the export side, uh, our trucking community to see how we can, as a port authority and how as a, a terminal operator, how we can help our customers um, pick up their uh, import loads uh, more quickly instead of having them dwell at our terminal facilities. And, and the same goes for, for our export customers as well, because we are seeing uh, extended dwell time where, where the, uh, the, uh, the containers are delivered well ahead of, of earliest receiving date. So we're, we're, we're seeing our, our dwell times uh, escalate uh, in the recent months. I hope that answers that question. Thank you, thank you very much, Dominic. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll let I'll let my, my my email address here to everyone. Uh, any other question or any any other doubt about how to use Port Houston and how Port Houston can help your business down here in Brazil and now in South America? Uh, my email address is right here, so you can you can you can contact me anytime. Okay. Well, we are run of the time. Uh, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you very much to everyone. I would like to, to, to give the word to each one of you uh, to say your last words. And, and again, thank you, thank you very much. Let me start on the, right, uh, on the back to Alphabet Water. Alex. Again, thanks, uh, Port Houston. Thanks, uh, the Brazil, Texas uh, Chamber of Commerce. It's a great discussion. I think that the topics are so uh, uh, inside our lives. Um, we, there are industry players, right? That are, I feel everybody wants to discuss more and continue over a coffee, right? So uh, I think uh, if more chances we have, uh, that will be good. I think we share interests in a way, right? In that this industry improves and, uh, and um, yeah, we are better profitability, better people, better planet, let's say, right? All the peace. And uh, yeah, and we grow together. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the all the organization and the panelists. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Alex. Uh, Luciano, thank you very much, guys. It was a great discussion. And good luck to to continue on and on. And um, thanks for for setting this virtually. This this was a new opportunity after the pandemic. And hope to, to see you soon in, in any other space. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Manuel? Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Masil. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for the, for the panelists. And uh, congratulations for the initiative of this webinar. I think that it's very important. And you know that you are part of important in, in our India. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Manuel. Dominic. Well, uh, thank you very much to, you know, all of the panelists in sharing with us, you know, your expertise on this particular subject. It's very important for us, not only as a service provider, but for us to also understand your respective industries and, and how we can effectively continue to support this industry with you know, predictable service, et cetera. So, you know, again, you know, uh, uh, thank you everyone and thank Bradtech for this opportunity for us to be partnership with, uh, in partnership with Bradtech to host this great event. And hopefully I will have an opportunity to see uh, Manuel in person and Luciano again shortly. I have my fingers crossed, but uh, uh, thank you so much and, 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 and take care. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dominic. Well, Bratek, 
Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Manuel, Luciano, Alex, thanks a lot uh, for participating and accept the invitation. Dominic, thank you. Thank you very much for representing Porto Houston while I'm, I'm the moderator here. Uh, thank you, every, My pleasure. everybody, all the attendees, uh, and hope to see you guys uh, personally soon. We are at the end of this of this journey okay thank you very much this is the first event down of downstream uh for Bratech and port houston but we're gonna have another one soon absolutely the success that it was this one thank you very much muito obrigado a todos tenham uma boa, boa semana muito obrigado tchau tchau yeah.